Ezekiel 36, 25 through 27 KJV. Then will I sprinkle clean water upon you, and ye shall be clean. From all your filthiness and from all your idols, I will cleanse you. A new heart also will I give you, and a new spirit will I put within you. And I will take away the stony heart out of your flesh, and I will give you an heart of flesh. And I will put my spirit within you, and cause you to walk in my statutes. And ye shall keep my judgments, and do them. We all have things we have done in the past that we are not proud of. I will be honest, and I will be the first to hold my hand up. I have done things that I am not proud of. I have done things that I regret. I have had habits that I am ashamed of. There are things in my own life that I have done that I wish I could forget. And I am sure that you can relate to this. If you look at your own life, I am sure there are things which you have done that you do not want the world to know about. And if the truth be told, there are some things we are still struggling with today. There are things that we are still crying and struggling with. Now one problem we have that is creeping into the church is the New Age belief that you are enough to save yourself, that in your own power you can overcome sin, that you are a little God and that you can conquer sin on your own. There is a teaching that is going around the church, which sort of builds up people to attempt to be their own savior. This is completely contrary to the Word of God. The Word of God tells us time and time again that we are not self-sufficient. We need God. John 15, 4 through 6, Abide in me, and I in you. As the branch cannot bear fruit of itself, except it abide in the vine. No more can ye, except ye abide in me. I am the vine, ye are the branches. He that abideth in me, and I in him, the same bringeth forth much fruit. For without me, ye can do nothing. If a man abideth not in me, he is cast forth as a branch, and is withered. And men gather them, and cast them into the fire, and they are burned. To overcome that sin, you need God. To find your purpose in life, you need God. To be complete, you need God. Don't allow these self-help books and self-help teachers to infiltrate your mind. This New Age teaching teaches that we humans fundamentally are good in nature and pure and that we need to do a few things for us to get there. Look at what the Bible says, the works of the flesh are, that natural state of humanity. Galatians 5, 19 through 21. Now the works of the flesh are manifest, which are these, adultery, fornication, uncleanliness, lasciviousness, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, variance, emulations, wrath, strife, seditions, heresies, envyings, murders, drunkenness, revelings, and such like, of which I tell you before, as I have told you in time past, that they which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. This is what the Bible refers to as the nature of mankind. We are all born into the flesh, and our flesh manifests according to that is spoken of in Galatians. My friends, run from this New Age teaching. You are not enough. You are not self-sufficient. You are not able to overcome that sin by yourself. And even if you are able to overcome that sin by yourself, you are only replacing it with the dark spirit of self-righteousness. That within my own power and own self-control, I overcame this sin. I say this all to get to one point. We need God. To overcome sin, we need God. Give yourself over to Him and let Him change you. Some people think they can help themselves out of some situations they have been trapped in. They think they will fight their ways out of the traps. When I'm talking about traps, I'm talking of addictions that many people struggle with today. You cannot help yourself out of addictions if you are struggling with one. You cannot get out of it yourself. You need to let God Himself change you. You need to humble yourself before the Lord. God will not help you if you are full of pride. Humble yourself and see yourself as what you are, a sinner that needs Jesus. When you see yourself as a sinner, that is when God can help. If you are struggling with addiction or sin of any kind, ask God to change you. He says in his words that he will create in you a new heart. He will sprinkle clean water on you and you will be clean. This is a promise from God to you. This is what God will do for you if you can humble yourself before him and let him change you. There are many aspects of our lifestyle that we need to let go of, but it is hard because they have become part of our daily life. For instance, many people struggle with lust in their minds. They just can't help but lust after the opposite sex. They just can't help it. Once they see the opposite sex, they just start lusting immediately. They hate that this happens to them, but they just can't help it. Maybe for you it is deceit and lies that you struggle with. You know it is bad, but you can't help it. You just lie with ease. You feel no remorse for telling lies to cheat and destroy people's lives. You want to change, but it is hard. It is because you are walking in the flesh. Maybe what you are struggling with is anger. You just get angry at the drop of a dime. 
You live your whole life on the edge. Your family is even scared to interact with you. Your husband or wife has to tiptoe around you because you are a ticking time bomb. You know it is a horrible habit and you want to stop your propensity to get angry quickly, but you cannot stop it. Anger has deprived you of many opportunities, or maybe has even ended your marriage, and you are feeling terrible about it. This is not something you want for yourself. Maybe you've even attended a series of anger management classes, but none of them have helped. God is here to help you. I may not have stated the sin you are struggling with, but you know yourself what the sin is you struggle with. Do you want God to change you? You have a part to play. There is something important that you need to do if you want God to change you truly, and that is surrendering your life to Christ. Surrendering your life to Christ is simply acknowledging, I can't do this by myself, Lord. I need your help. Maybe you are even born again, but you still want that change in a particular area of your life. The reason is that you are not inviting Jesus to that part of your life. This is the time to invite Jesus to that part. It is time for you to invite Jesus to every area of your life. Don't shut him out of some parts of your life. You need a total change. You need to be a new being. You need to be a brand new being in Christ. The first thing you do is cry out like the psalmist in Psalm 51, 10 through 13, KJV. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Cast me not away from thy presence, and take not thy Holy Spirit from me. Restore unto me the joy of thy salvation, and uphold me with thy free spirit. Then I will teach transgressors thy way, and sinners shall be converted unto thee. This is the first thing you need to do. David needed a change of heart. He knew that he had failed. He knew his heart had been corrupted by sin, and he cried out, that the Lord changes his heart. This is what you should do today. Let God see that you really want him to change you. Let God see that you are serious about the change and you want a new life. Cry out to the Lord for a change of heart. God will listen to you and will change you. 2 Chronicles 7.14 KJV If my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and will heal their land. God will hear you from heaven when you cry out. Paul says in Galatians 2.20 KJV that I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live, yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. Paul became born again. Paul crucified the old self with Christ, and he lived again, but with Christ. He became a changed being. He lived for Christ. He submitted himself to God to be changed through Christ. This is what God is telling every one of us today. He wants to change us, but are we ready to experience the new birth? Are we ready to be crucified with Christ and be raised in Christ again? Are we ready to accept Jesus and forget about the life of sin? Are we ready to walk in the spirit and not in the flesh? Are we ready to refuse to gratify the desires of the flesh? Are we ready to be changed by God? You may say you want God to change you, but in reality, you may not be ready to be changed. Are you ready to be changed? Live your life for Christ. Romans 12, 2, King James Version. And be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. The best way to live as a Christian is to live for Christ. If we live for Christ, there are some things that we will not do in our lives and some things that we will steer clear from. When we live our lives for Christ, we will do all that Christ asks us to do. We cannot allow anything to come in between us and Christ. When we give our lives to Christ, when we decide to leave the part of darkness, to come to the part of the light, we exchange our lives for eternal life. We collect the life of Christ in us and we give him our own. The life we are living now is not for us, but for Christ. If you are living for Christ, you will not have hatred in you. If you are living for Christ, you will not have bitterness in you. If you have the life of Christ in you and you are living for Christ, you will have the power of God in you because the life of Christ is filled with the power of God. You need to note that you as a Christian must have the life of Christ in you and you must live for him 
Don't think because you are calling yourself a Christian, you are already living for Christ. Some people will be living in sin and still be saying they are living for Christ. You cannot be living in fornication and be living for Christ. You cannot be living in lasciviousness and be living for Christ. The life of Christ is not a life of sin. It is a holy life. We need to know the right thing to do.